Jonah is 77 yards in the game. First down for the Dolphins in the 12 as they reach that. Flags are down. That was an audible. I think you saw Bulosh move late to try to come back over behind the snap of I mean, the center. Left side of the line, offensive line, got a little nervous waiting for him to come over. That's a motion penalty against the Dolphins. They've had very few mistakes, no turnovers in the game. And uh, a paucity of penalties as Denver now leads San Diego 10 0. Jim Turner's kicked a field goal. So Denver stays in the wild card race if they win. Oakland leading Kansas offense. City 21 to 10. Illegal motion. Center route just booted a 41 yard field goal. That puts the ball back on the seven yard line. Uh, Miami makes it first and 15 to score. Pittsburgh seven, Miami three. Miami scoring in the third period. Pittsburgh has never beaten Miami. Well, three meeting. Tripped up at the 10 yard line, and the man tripping him up with Jack Ham. Oh, I'm Number telling 59. you. There's another guy that's not big that really does make some big plays. Each team has had four penalties for 28 yards of the game. Second down. 12 to go for the Dolphins. Time, 9.35 remaining. Dolphins and the Steelers. The loser in this game will be about out of it. Especially after New England won today for postseason possibility. Hit hard with the 14 by Holmes and Lambert. Tell Lambert you. was out of the plate and came back to help make it. All right, you see again from that vantage point as a middle linebacker, he had Ed Newman came out number 64. Good block. You don't ask for a better block than that on a middle linebacker, but you don't expect the middle linebacker to get up and do this. I guess the next time you get him down, he's got to lay on him. You all right? Well, you have to bring handcuffs. Oh, okay. Leg iron. Third down, nine. We'll put it up. Fires it out. Right in the lead. First down to the 25 yard line. It's to Jim Mandich. Good pass by Greasy, Kurt. That was right between Lambert and Russell, I believe. The two linebackers back in there. Mandich just found an open spot and he zipped it right in there and didn't have that much time to throw that one either. Got hit right after he let it go. Manish has caught his third pass of the game, and so the Dolphins precariously move out from their half-yard line. They've moved up to their 25-yard line. They're behind 7-3, to three, and they have a little over eight minutes remaining to avert a defeat that would probably knock them out of any postseason chance. Solomon spinning away is down on the Pittsburgh 45. Solomon was a tremendous running quarterback at the University of Tampa. He has those quick feet. Boy, he really does. That one was a really pretty wide open. He's working over here. Let's take a quick look at his protection, which is always the key, particularly when you play Pittsburgh. You have little blocking on Greenwood. New one on Green, wide open out here on the outside in front of Thomas. Made a good little turn, spin around. You see Lambert and Ham, both the linebackers, kind of overrun it a little bit. Thomas regroups himself and comes back. All right, Ray, Ray Solomon. Solomon. What an athlete. Wagner's out, Donnie Charles in. First down, Miami and the Pittsburgh 45. Malone driving to the 42-yard line of Pittsburgh. A gain of three, second and seven. First downs now, Pittsburgh has 16, Miami 12. And the Dolphins started this drive on their own half-yard line as the clock moves on. Curdy, if they could just get a field goal, I think this trip, the way they stop Pittsburgh on the goal line has to mean something to them. To get a field goal, they'll come back. They might get another one before this thing's over. They played with a lot of fire in the second half. Malone, let's get it. Move. He was building. He was hit there. That's Banasek down. Yep. Helped up by Ed Newman. Banasek limping to the sideline. 
White White's coming in. Let's see if we can get another look at this shot. The ball was not thrown well, and Thomas catches Malone in a very vulnerable position, wide open, and plow. Third and seven. White White's in it right in. Donnie Shell's come in the backfield. Jack Lambert's out. The Dolphins have converted seven out of 13 chances on third down. Remarkable. Time. Holmes first. Dwight White, the guy that first came in, he made it move too. That's a four sack for Pittsburgh. The one for Miami. Let's watch this one. I think it's going to be Dwight White, the guy that puts the outside pressure in there. You'll see, yep, right there, sliding by. Dwight plays with some intensity also. Great deal of excitement. I think that was Holmes that actually came in there, and Greenwood put the last tag on him. Now, Shula. Most of watch his disciples in punt formation. Glenn Edwards is deep. They got a veteran back now receiving punts. This is going to be a good kick. Edwards takes it on the 14. Good move. And he's nailed inside his 20. Again, Nottingham down there covering that kick. And we have a timeout before Pittsburgh takes over with a score. Pittsburgh 7 and Miami 3. Mr. Heidloom? Uh huh? Ah, Mr. Heidloom. Yes. Yeah. Look, we understand that you're taking a trip with us tomorrow. Trip? Yeah, well, we want you to know that Avis is working right now. Avis? It's vacuuming your car, checking the oil, oil, brakes, even the air in the spare tire. Spare tire. One of the ways Avis tries harder is working at night, so you're ready harder? in the morning. Yeah. Oh, by the uh, way, it's a uh, Chrysler Cordoba, and it's blue. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. One of these batteries started a whole revolution in automobile batteries. The J.C. Penney battery. There are no filler caps. You never have to add water. It's the most powerful battery ever built for a passenger car. That's why it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. The moment that MacArthur's on the ground, the Colonel's gonna kill every one of us. You guys with grenades? World Conrad. War II action with Robert Conrad in the TV hit Bob Bob Black Sheep, Tuesday on NBC. If you study the Pittsburgh history this season of scoring, look how they gain momentum. Quarter by quarter, their best scoring has been in the fourth period, which usually means two things, or three. One, ability, depth, and physical conditioning. Well, the Dolphins have actually done better in the second quarters and the fourth quarters also in score. First down for the Steelers on their 22. Flyer for the 26. He's had 114 yards rushing. And Franco Harris has rushed for over 100. Second down, six. Pittsburgh. Oh. Yeah, the Cardinals, Terry Metcalf, had just run two yards for a score. And the Rams lead over the Cardinals, been sliced 21 to 20. Rams at them 21 to 6. This will be a second down and six. Michael Harris to the 29. The Steelers have 210 yards rushing. Bradshaw picked some of it up early before he was injured with a sprained right wrist. Let's take a look at this one. This is Gordon all by himself. We had that little half motion comes outside. Gordon's number 50 coming from his outside linebacker position. When Franco stops to come back, Gordon's there. Three tight ends for the Steelers now. Third and two. Motion is wired and pitches to Harris. Harris they have the first down. That play has been effective. They start Blyer in motion. He becomes almost like a pulling guard. That's right. And uh, Franco Harris runs behind him. That time, Randy Crowder, number 74, was coming down the line pretty fast. And if he didn't make it, well, he did, actually. But Crowder was the guy that came down from his inside position. Got Franco as he cut back. Franco has 107 yards so far today. Is that right? What do you have? 
Uh, he has a little over that, Don. 111, Blyers 114, Arnsberger. Now the assistant head coach, the title he used to have before he went up with the Giants. Who's that? Great takes around. The ball is tough. I'm telling you. Hey, he's got to do something weird with it or he, before he can go, you know? Bounce it, bobble it. <laughs> but he, it turns up good. Go he always, him, always comes back to it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a sign of a winning ball player. Steelers on their 39. What they're doing now is running that clock, too. We're down to 325 to go. Right after this game, stay tuned for Grandstand with a rundown of the day in the NFL, plus a look at the standings and playoff possibilities. Rushed right along with all the running. But now he's jammed up. Flyer is contained and dropped, and he ran in to Jim Clark that time, his own man, who was pulling out of their right guard and slowed him down. Well, I think there were some reasons for that. They got good penetration by this defensive right side of the Dolphins' defense. They had them together there. Watch this now. I hear his flyer. Watch Clack pulling out. This is where he runs into Clack. Clack is pushed, pushed back. Uh, really, Franco was trying to pick up some people in there, and I think Franco's stopping. He's had great penetration. That's Babb to keep up there again. All right, they have three wide receivers on the field. Two guys. Shoot the pass. All right. The Frank at the 40. The 30 of Miami. The 20. And he's in for a touchdown. Oh, he oh, stepped he's out. He's out. He he's out of the two-yard line. He hit the mark at the two-yard line. A wanna... crossing pattern. They put three wide receivers in and hit it. Now, well, Jerry White was trying to play with him all the way down that field there. Figure out what he was trying to do, and Lewis just kept running. Gave him a stiff arm and almost made it in, 63 yards. Let's see it again. He's got great protection to start with. He's got plenty of time to throw. Comes across from the middle. Two receivers at the same time. You see him cut to the outside. There's no secondary guy here. And there's Jerry White, number 41. Gives him a quick stiff arm. And where does he step out? Right there. Boy, those referees are sharp. You know what? He was barely touched. Well, how the complexion changed. They had a third and seven on their own 35. Now it's first and goal to go for the Steelers. And they call timeout. And they want to get together. So a timeout here in Three Rivers. The score, Pittsburgh 7, Miami 3. Both of these guys spent all morning cutting with chainsaws. One used an ordinary chainsaw. The other used the Poland Counter Vibe, a powerful lightweight with automatic chain oiling, a super quiet muffler, and a shock absorbing system that reduces vibration up to 78%. So, which guy used the Poland Counter Vibe, and which one didn't? See the Poland Counter Vibe at your Poland dealer. My friends have got a big job building their own house, so they needed a big job pickup. They picked Dodge, because in addition to looking good inside and out, Dodge carries a standard payload of over 1,500 pounds. And it got darn good gas mileage, too. You take good looks, payload, and mileage, you got it all. Dodge trucks have got it where it counts. Kurt Gowdy and Don Meredith bring you all the live play-by-play -play action Thanksgiving Day when Greg Landry and the Detroit Lions host the Buffalo Bills. Can O.J. Simpson and the Bills offense penetrate the tough defense of the Lions? Catch all the action the way you expect it to be covered, beginning at 12 Eastern time with Grandstand, Thanksgiving Day on NBC. Frank Lewis came out of Grambling College as a brilliant prospect. He's been nagged with injuries. That stall we're talking to him. Today, he just caught a big one, though. The longest pass of the season, 65 yards. And now it's a first down for the Steelers in the Miami yard and a half line. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Well, you know, uh, one time, Pittsburgh had a first and four and failed to punch it over. That's five plays inside the four then, Kurt. Look at it that way. That's a good job for that Miami defense. Steelers, the clock is running. The Steelers have two timeouts left. The Dolphins, three. Miami, the 10, 11-point underdogs. 
They fought the Steelers to a standstill here in the second half. But Pittsburgh now had the chance to wrap it up. And there's a two-minute warning with the score. Pittsburgh 7, Miami 3. There's the rookie Mike Kruzik in the huddle. Second down, a yard to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Just about wrap this one up for him. Reggie Harrison and Rocky Blyer are behind him. There he's got it. Reggie Harrison scores. And that gives Pittsburgh now a 13 to 3 lead. Today, Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer each went over 100 yards. Here it is. Straight ahead, watch it. Good acceleration. You just see he's going there. He's also got a good block over there for a change. Let's watch the line fire off now. This is what makes it. They blast Miami back just a little bit and enable Harrison to sneak it in. Right over Clack and, and Mullins. Gorilla for the point. And now the Steelers have a 14 to 3 lead. And again, another timeout with a score. Steelers 14, Miami 3. sellout crowd at Three River Stadium. A brisk, clear day as NBC Sports presents the Houston Oilers versus the Pittsburgh Steelers from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation and your Dodge dealer who invite you to buy or lease the unbelievable 77 Dodge Aspen. And by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated of St. Louis. Brewers of Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. Hi, everybody. Kurt Gowdy with John Brody. Every game is the last game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> As for the Houston Oilers, well, they're trying to be the spoilers now. Pittsburgh still has a chance for their divisional title if somebody else can knock off Cincinnati for them and they can handle the Bengals next Sunday in Cincinnati. Otherwise, it's a wild card berth for the defending Super Bowl champs. And uh, they don't have the inside track to that either as we take a look. New England right now with only three losses has the best chance and they've already beaten Pittsburgh this year in case of the tie between the two teams. Cleveland and Denver have each lost four. They're in the running. Miami mathematically is in the running but their chances are very remote. So that's the way it stands for the playoff berth. And let's take a look today. We have an interesting story. The starting quarterbacks normally Terry Bradshaw and Dan Pastorini are out with injuries and we have a youngster and an old vet stepping in. Let's take a look at the kid first, Mike Kruzik for Pittsburgh. Tell you, Kurt, Mike Kruzik would love to have Houston in the hole you've got me in right here. But he's a kid that's come on very fast in the last three ball games. Every time he started, he's won. He seems to really use the personality of the Pittsburgh Steelers to the utmost. He's going to have his job cut out for him today as Houston did a fine job last week against Cincinnati. And Hadel has been around 15 years and he did a job last Sunday. And he's the reason that Houston did the job against Cincinnati they did. He's a guy that really uh, Cincinnati hadn't had much opportunity to see because Dan Pastorini had been doing most of the playing. He put a lot of diddling and daddling together. He kept consistent drives moving down the field. Today he's going to have to do a lot of that because in the film he has not seen anybody score on Pittsburgh for five games and that makes it tough on a quarterback. And Franco Harris is on his way to another thousand yard season. He'd be the fourth player in the history of the NFL to gain a thousand yards at least four times. Kurt when you talk about Franco Harris you talk about most of the personality of the Pittsburgh Steelers along with Rocky Blyer. Those guys are superb. Obviously I'd love to be Mike Krusek handing the ball to a man like Franco. Let's go down and take a look now at the officials for today's game and we'll have the toss of the coin. There's the referee Ben Greif. The umpire is Art Demis. The headlinesman is Frank Glover. The line judge is Jack Johnson. The back judge is Stan Javi. And the field judge is Dick Ferguson.
We understand that uh, we had a technical difficulty in the feeds today by the telephone company, and uh, you uh, fans looking in in New York did not see Grandstand. We apologize for that. And uh, everything's straightened out, and we hope you enjoy today's game between the Oilers and the Steelers. The Oilers are in white, the Steelers in the black, and let's go down now for the toss of the coin. Okay, Houston, call it in the air. Tails, Tails he called. It's a head. Turn around, man. All right, Pittsburgh won a toss. They're going to receive. Let's have a good game. Houston Oilers will be kicking off. We'll be back here at Three River Stadium right after this message. The Oilers in white will kick off. Ernie Pugh, number 85, Jack Delaplane, and Theo Bell are the deep men. Pugh's on the goal line in the middle. Skip Butler will do the kicking. Very little breeze today. It's not much of a factor. First meeting of the season between these two teams. They'll play later in Houston. It's a short kick. Delaplane handles it on the 17. 20, 25. Starts to cut away. And he's up to the 30, the 35, the 40. An excellent run by the rookie. Jack Delaplane of Salem, West Virginia College. He was very impressive in preseason. Hasn't played a lot since then. He was run out of bounds by Stemrick. Now here's the Steeler backfield. Kruzik's at quarterback. Blair and Harris are the running backs. Frank Lewis, 43, and Lynn Swan, 88, are the running backs. Kruzik has started three games, and they've won all three, beating Cincinnati, the Giants, and San Diego. They have a double tight end offense in there right now, Brown and Cunningham. Balls off to Franco Harris, and Franco to his 49-yard line. Here's the offensive line. Brown to tight end, Cole 55, Davis 57, Webster 52, Black 50, Jerry Mullen 72. In the early part of the season, that offensive line was racked up by some injuries. Second down six, Steelers under 48. Here's Rocky Blyer, hey, he's taken down for a loss. Trapped on his 57-yard line. He's hit there by uh, number 52, Robert Brazil, who overtakes nine five backs from behind. <laughs> now, here's the Oilers, their famous three-man defense. Cody Smith is injured today, so they have Albert Burton, a rookie, at left end, 68. Culp in the middle, 78, and Bethea, 65, at right end. Third down and seven. That pass complete for first down. Larry Brown, the tight end, in front of C.L. Whittington. If this kid had a, a statistic that's impressive, it would be third down passes. He throws the ball very seldom, but when you get into third and seven situations, he's, he's done it, and he's done it very effectively. He's put himself in the toughest possible position to execute. That's a simple example of what he's been doing the past four games. First down, and again, we want to apologize. The uh, <laughs> sound, we understand now we've had difficulties. The audio has been corrected, and uh, let's hope we have no more problems the rest of the game. Flyer went in motion. Franco Harris peels off the other way. 35, 30, first down, and he's run out of bounds. And I don't believe that was a conceived play. I think he just saw what was close to him, and he said, I'm going to take my own. And that's a play that Franco does well. He does it well because he's got an offensive line that gets great surge. There's no way a back can cut back in that sort of a situation unless he's got excellent offensive surge from his offensive line. He had it. He had just enough room to get turned around the other side and go against the flow. 18-yard run for Franco Harris. Backing up the line, Washington, Kiner, Bingham, and Brazil for the Oilers. Stemrick in the left corner, Zeke Moore is the right corner, and Reinfeld and Whittington are the safety man. That's the Oiler defense.
Mike Reinfeld making that stop and Rocky Blyer. We have no score here. The uh, Oilers kicked off the Steelers from their own 44 now have driven to the 14 yard line of the Oilers. Ernest Pugh has gone into the wide receiver with Frank Lewis. It is second down and three. The Steelers on the mark. They have been awesome the last five games. In motion is Blyer. This is something they've been doing a lot. Starting Blyer in motion, and he looks like a pulling guard. He leads the way for the ball carrier. You hit it, Kurt. He leads the way, and the funny thing about this drive is it's third down and, and one yard to go, and they haven't had a hole. Their offensive surge has just pushed them down the field nine yards. Nobody's run through any, any hole at the point of attack. That's just great offensive line play. John, they also do something uh, unusual. They use three tight ends. They now have Brown, Grossman, and Cunningham all in the lineup for blocking power. Third down in the yard to go. Steelers in the 12-yard line of the Houston Oilers. That's Blyer in motion. Here's Franco. Franco may have the first down. He skipped out. He does have it as he skipped out on the 10-yard line. Uh, four stop by Mike Renfeld, the rookie strong safety. Look at those two uh, figures. Last year, they both, or last week, 110 yards rushing. And the week before that, they each had over 100 yards rushing. That hasn't been done many times in pro football history. Back-to-back -back weeks. First down now for the Steelers. First and goal to go. They're on the Houston 10-yard line. Kruzik's main job in replacing Bradshaw has been handing off. Now then he'll raise up and throw a pass. Then he can throw accurately. He's not a good long ball thrower. That's Blyer, five, Rocky Blyer, touchdown. Blyer knifing over, 10 yards out. What a year he's having. <laughs> I, had, I had just mentioned that they hadn't opened many holes. They just pushed everybody back. This play is a definite hole. Their guards pulled. They get pretty good straight ahead surge. But as you can see, Rocky Blyer comes right off the block to Jim Clack, runs it right over the end zone. One guy got a semi piece, not enough to do any harm. And this is what it looks like from the playing for. Uh, I'm sure he's going to score again, and he does it pretty easily. He scores six zip. Roy Jarella, Bobby Wall in holding. The kick is good. Well, it didn't take Pittsburgh long. They drove 56 yards for that touchdown. And we'll take a timeout. It's Steelers seven and Oilers nothing. Uh, we set up the scene. We have two backup quarterbacks playing today. Bradshaw and Pastorini are out. Pittsburgh went 56 yards for the touchdown. And it is Billy Johnson giving way to Ollie Taylor. Taylor passing a 20 and down to his 21 yard line. And I imagine Bum Phillips would have rather had Johnson take the ball. Well, I'm sure he didn't get his druthers. That's what makes a good kickoff. The kick is the man that's uh, least likely to run it back. Hadel will be the quarterback, 21. Ronnie Coleman, 47. And Fred Willis, 44, the running backs. Burrow, double out, Billy Johnson, 84, are the wide receivers. As the Oilers come out, trailing already 7-0. They started the season winning four out of their first five. Now they've fallen on tough time. In motion is Billy Johnson. He's been nagged with injuries all year. Ronnie Coleman, and he's running against the number one rushing defense in the National Football League. Joe Green made the hit. Here's the rest of the offense. Sawyer is a tight end, 81. It's Hunt, Heyman. Mock, Fisher, and Drungo, the Oilers offense. They're on their 23-yard line, second down eight. John Hadel, San Diego, L.A., Green Bay, now Houston. Red Willis ganged up at the 26-yard line by John Banasek and Andy Russell. The famous front four of the Steelers, Greenwood, Green, Holmes, and Banasak. Banasak, a third stringer. Been playing very well, though. There are their linebackers. That's the heart of their defense. Ham, Lambert, and Russell. And the secondary, Thomas and Blood in the corners, Wagner and Edwards, the safety. Third down. Four to go. Houston on their 26. Hadel looking. The pass is incomplete intended for the tight end, Sawyer. Broken up by Mike Wagner, the strong safety, number 23. And Houston will have to go into a punt formation. And the steel curtain defense gets a roar as they come off the field. Theo Bell is going back. The Steelers have averaged 10 yards of punt return this year. 
Bell's been their main man. We have a 13-yard run by Don Woods of San Diego's leading Buffalo, 7-0 in the first period. 13-21 to play. Skip Butler will do the punting. Pastorini has injured ribs. Uh-oh. They weren't rushing the kicker, or they might have had that one blocked. Bell takes it on the 35. 40. 45. And Bell finally ganged up on his 47 or 48-yard line, and the Steelers keep their record of intact of never calling for a fair catch this year. <laughs> Time out, John. We'll be back as the Steelers go on the attack with the score. Pittsburgh 7 and Houston nothing. Harold Carmichael had just passed three yards or received a pass three yards from Gabriel, and the Eagles lead Oakland 7-0. 11 minutes to go in the first period. Oh, uh, Pittsburgh ball under 48 now. They stay right on the ground with Blyer. Flyers tackled by Kiner and Brazil at the Steeler. Just short of the 50, we'll put it right on the 50, and they've got a second coming and eight to go. Kurt, how many times have you seen a team take the opening kickoff, run it into the end zone? It looks like the ball game's going to be a walk away. All of a sudden, the next time they get it, it's not quite as easy. They get stopped, and the ball game goes right back in the hat, and they can't move the ball the rest of the day. This drive is a big one for Pittsburgh because they've taken control and they've got to keep it. Second down eight. Swan, Stallworth, the wide receiver. They're both healthy again. Flyer again. And Rocky runs it to the 44-yard line of Houston, where he's cut down by C.L. Whittington and Greg Bingham. Flyer has arrived as one of the outstanding running backs now in the American Football Conference. You wonder why it took him so long. This is his eighth year with just opportunities, chances to play. He was a very special member of the Pittsburgh special teams for a while. You bet. He has become a a big league ball carrier now, but uh, he's responsible for several of the yards, and I think Franco will tell you himself that Franco's gained over the past three or four years. He's an, he's an all-purpose back. He does exactly what he's asked to do, and he does it extremely well. I think he may be just as, just as, as uh, necessary to the output of this squad as is Franco. And let's take a look at Franco Harris. When he hasn't got the ball, he also is helping Rocky, and that's the way a, a good offensive team gets moving. It's awful hard to get a piece of some of those defensive cornerbacks and linebackers when they're out in the open. They've got a lot of field before them. And Franco gets in front. He does his job. That's all you can ask. Mike Reinfeldt picked up from the Raiders after he was cut there from Wisconsin to Milwaukee. is shaken up. He goes out. And Bob Atkins, number 48 of Grambling, is in. Three tight ends. The Steelers have a third down and two. They're on the Houston 44-yard line. Pittsburgh ahead 7-0. Pitches to Harris. Harris has the first down. I don't I can't ever remember. Well, a couple of times. I've never really seen him stop behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and I don't think you will see him as long as the front group does the job they've been doing. Now that's a wide play. Houston's got excellent pursuit on their in their defense. They've got great speed with their linebackers. They still weren't able to penetrate the offensive thrust. Franco really had it picked up by the time he made contact. First down, Steelers on the Houston 40. And these Steelers live or die by the rushing game. They're living very well lately. <laughs> Here's Kruzik toss. It's intercepted. Intercepted, stepping in front there. It looked like C.L. Whittington. He's got it, 38. And uh, they had a fight for the ball, but Whittington was there first and held on to it. It was intended for Swan. And you'll see right here, Kurt, why sometimes quarterbacks throw interceptions that look like stupid plays. He had no way to see C.L. Whittington. He's got all his attention on Lynn Swan coming across the middle. He was a little late throwing it to him. You can see he had to play the whole way. He's looking right, he knows right where the quarterback's throwing, had the best opportunity to get it, and Houston's got the ball. Dwight White now comes into the game at right end. He's been injured this year. Banasak took his place. White's finally back in the lineup, and that's Fred Willis tracking forward to the 30-yard line. Flag on the play. That's holding against Houston, and the Oilers just can't get in track so far in this game. No, and down in that, in your own territory on that 27-yard line, there's a big difference between operating there and the 17 where they're going. Andy Russell, who's retiring at the end of this year, he has Russell Industries, a business investment service. Says it's doing very well. 
Brody said, why are you quitting? You're still a great player. And he said, it's covering those backs coming out of the backfield. <laughs> I'll tell you, Kurt, he hadn't been covering too many lately. He's been blitzing a lot. And it might have something to do with their effectiveness. Watch the holding on this right. replay here. Nothing severe. Just grabbed him a little. Carl Mock. Sec a first down 20. Houston's ball in their 17. Adel on a play action. Over the head of Fred Willis was flaring out of the backfield. Second down. 20 to go. Oilers on their 17. The telecast. Presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. John Hadle, a number three pick back in 1962 for the San Diego Chargers. And uh, he was quite a quarterback with them. The Jets, this is not surprising. The Patriots don't play well against the teams that don't have good re uh, records. The Jets are leading New England 10-0. Fred Willis bangs ahead to the 20. Third down 17. If New England does not rally, they would wind up the day with four losses. If the Steelers would win this game, they'd have four losses. Now, if they wound up the season, each with four losses, New England would go into the playoffs unless Denver would be there as a wild card <laughs> team because New England has beaten Pittsburgh. This I'm year. interested in hearing you describe it. Now, the first tiebreaker. If two teams are tied for a division title or a run a runner up berth is how do they do against each other. Right. The second one is within the division. The third is within the conference. How did you do there compared to the team you're tied with? Third down. Whistle. The whistle took place Kurt because uh, as I mentioned earlier Pittsburgh's doing things that they weren't doing personality wise early in the year. They're blitzing a whole lot more. To, they showed me a, a defensive alignment that I have not seen and I've covered six Pittsburgh games this year uh, and I, I have the feeling it confused Hale a little bit. That's why they're too much time. Donnie Shell becomes a fifth secondary back. Number 31. Jack Lambert is taken out. It's third and 22 now for Houston. Now this hasn't been able to get started on offense yet. They're going to run it with Ronnie Coleman. Coleman is hit at the 15. Coming up from the left corner spot with J.T. Thomas and L.C. Greenwood defended from his left end. Again, the steel curtain puts the clamps down. They have not had a touchdown scored on them in the last 21 quarters. Better than five games. Only nine points have been allowed in their last five games by the Steelers. And only the field goal kickers can score on them. Theo Bell drops back to the safety man to receive the punt from Skip Butler. Fourth and 24 for Houston. Seven nothing. Steelers leading. 6:20 to go in the first period. They're getting low passes. This should be a return. Bell takes it on the 49 to the 45. Skips his way to the 40. Gets down to the 35. That's a 15-yard return. He never should have had it. The Oilers had a couple of shots at him and missed him along the way. We'll take a timeout before Pittsburgh puts the ball in play. It's the Steelers seven and the Oilers nothing. What field position they've had. They started from their own 44, from their own 48, and now from the Houston 35. You can't beat that. First down, Pittsburgh on the Houston 35. Kruzek handing off to Rocky Blyer. And Blyer two yards to 33 of Houston. The tackle by Steve Kiner. And also... Bob Atkins, number 48. Second down, eight. Now back in Franco Harris. He went out for a play, gave way to Reggie Harrison. The Steelers rushed 65% of the time this year. In 1974, when the Bills set the NFL record for rushing yardage in the year, they rushed 71% of the time. That's Harris. And he's to the 30-yard line. Again, Kiner from the outside. Curly Culp, the middle guard in there also. Here, let's take a look. This, they've been very effective up until now. Now, in two plays, they've gained five yards. But, do take a look at this offensive line surge. You've got Mike Webster, Jim Clack, John Culp. All these guys are doing an outstanding job of moving people off the line of scrimmage. It's going to be pretty easy unless uh, Houston stops the... <laughs> 
Steelers have had three third down chances and converted all three of them. Here's third and five, a little flip to Harris. That time he stopped short of a first down. I don't know. On the 25-yard line of Houston, he was nailed there by Bob Atkins, and the fans say, go, go. I think what they're doing, Kurt, is they're booing the fact they thought he had a first down, and uh, we may get a chance to look at it again, but uh, they're going for it. They've got about three inches to make. They're getting their tight ends. Here, the we'll, take, we'll take another look, Kurt. He's going back. He hits him on a little swing pass over the middle. Good defensive play. You can see it was called just perfectly. Reggie Harrison and Rocky Blyer set behind Mike Kruzik. The fumble. The guy stayed ahead. He kept the ball. They picked up a yard on the play. Reggie Harrison, they faked the Blyer and gave it to Harrison. And the Steelers going for the first down with inches make it. Now a score, Errol Mann has just kicked the 32-yard field goal. It's the Eagles 7 and Oakland 3. And uh, Jack Owinko has kicked a 29-yard field goal. It's San Diego leading Buffalo in the first period, 7-3. First down, Pittsburgh on the Houston 24. The Steelers are ahead in this game, 7-0. First period, 3.45 to play. Harrison and Blyer. Blyer. Three yards, that's all. Alvin Bethea, who just signed a series of new one-year contracts. He's been playing without a contract this year, or his old one running out. He had a serious injury last week in Cincinnati, injured his neck. They carried him off the field, but he's back. Very, very durable and very good. Alvin Bethea. On the 22-yard line, second down eight. Della Plains now in the lineup. I don't know whether there's anything wrong with Franco Harris or not. That's Della Plain. They slip off him. Now he's in trouble, and down he goes <laughs> at the 25. And the man that missed him first, but they came back and uh, helped take him again along with Brazil and Steve Kiner. The guy that made the play go, Kurt, is, is uh, Bob Brazil. He got back. He got in the backfield. He missed Della Plain, who made a fine play. But he still caused him to get around at such an angle that the pursuit could catch him. And uh, when you make a play that fine, your whole group's going to come in and, and make the rest of it for you. Lynn Swan and Stallworth are in as wide receivers as Bun Phillips tries to gather his forces around him. They're sending in plays via the wide receivers today. This is a third and 11 for the Steelers. Out they go. The little flares to Blyer, and Blyer is stopped at the 20 uh, yard line by. Greg Stemrick, the left cornerback, and Ted Washington, the left linebacker. And now the field goal team comes on the field for the Steelers. Roy Girilla. He's already missed twice as many field goals this year, eight as he did all last year. He's made out of 11 out of 19. James Scott and a pass from Bob Avellini, 50 yards, and the Bears lead the Lions 7-0. This one is going to be a 37-yard attempt. Bobby Walden holding. And that kick is good by Roy Girilla. The Steelers have increased their first quarter lead. They're now ahead 10 to nothing. A Thanksgiving Day treat from NBC Sports. O.J. Simpson and the Buffalo Bills meet Greg Landry and his Detroit Lions at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. I'll be there along with Don Meredith to provide the commentary for this holiday matchup which follows Grandstand beginning at 12 noon Eastern time. Grandstand, for its part, will be focusing on Thanksgiving Day football in America. And by the way, have a happy week. <laughs> Families gathering next week. Fellas taking off a day or two early. Brody will be playing golf all week. He's got an off week all the time. Not on Thanksgiving. Just a few weeks sure. a year. Huh? Not on Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> I'm going to watch you. Billy White Shoes Johnson with Ollie Taylor and Don Hardiman for the Oilers. And every team tries to kick away from Billy Johnson. He means a lot to this team when he's healthy. He's a threat on passing, running kicks back. Roy Girella will boot it off. The Steelers have completely throttled the Oilers so far. The 
Coming out with it is Billy Johnson. Cuts to the 20. Flag is down, and he runs out of bounds. But a flag was dropped at the 25-yard line. And we may have a clipping against. It Bill generally Ernie. is that uh, when it's in that area. I have the feeling that, uh, that Billy Johnson either saw the penalty or saw he had nowhere else to go. But I think he may have twisted his ankle because that is not the character of Billy Johnson. He's not the type of guy to run out of bounds when he has any light at all. Maybe on Kellum, I don't know. I think no, it's not. If we take a look, you'll see uh, Johnson running up and down the sideline. I believe he was a little bit hurt. Well, he's just been nagged all year. There he is. He had a phenomenal year for the Oilers last season. And it is. It looks like his right leg, his right ankle. He's trying to run that pain out. Banasak's gone back in and right in defensively for the Steelers. Again, Houston starts in poor operating position from their own 13 yard line. Interception by Jack Ham, and the alert left linebacker comes up with it, and the Steelers have the ball again, ready to go. You take a look, Jack Ham seems to do it every game. Whenever they need a turnover, he grabs it. Now they can take this ball game and just put it right away in the first quarter, and uh, Here's John. He's in a position he has to get him out of there. If they have to punt from inside their own 20 again, they're just going to run it back down their throats. He takes a chance, makes a bad throw. Ham's in the right spot, and they've got it on the six-yard line. Jack Ham intercepted on the 18. He is so consistent. I yeah. to say the best in any major league sports, uh, very difficult description. But there's really nobody better than Jack Ham. Smart. He's where the ball is. A hitter. Motivated. First and goal to go. Franco Harris dropped with a flag down. Harris was cutting off his right tackle. It was uh, sealed up, so he was trying to get to the outside. Brazil, Zeke Moore, that's against Houston. And you know, Kurt, that's the first time. Against I've Pittsburgh, I bet you might. Yep. That's, that's the first Pittsburgh. time I've seen that play actually stop, which Houston did, where they run their tight their their flanker inside and everybody knows they're just running them in motion so they can get an extra blocker over the middle for everybody to run through. First time they've been stopped. At 52 or something, isn't he? He's not too bad. He's the guy that ran down Isaac Curtis last week uh, and not because he had an angle. He's a destroyer. <laughs> Tremendous young linebacker. Robert Brazil of Jackson State is second year. Illegal motion, 84. Decline the penalty. They have declined the penalty. It was on 84, Randy Grossman. Charlie Joyner is taking a pass from Dan Fouts at five yards. And San Diego now is ahead of Buffalo, 14 to three, first period. Cleo Miller has scored on a two-yard run. Cleveland leads Tampa Bay, seven nothing. Brown still in the running for a wild card first. Second down, seven to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Kruzik is sacked. They get to him. Ted Washington blitzing 59, and the other blitzer from the right side was Robert Brazil, number 52. When they decide to send some, when they decide to send some people, Kurt, you'd better get rid of that ball in a hurry because it's drawing everybody in town after him. He rolls out a little bit. The guy that made the play go is the right side of the defensive secondary. They shut off the receivers. There's not much else Mike can do down there. Let's watch Brazil, John. All right. We're going to see where he ends up. He, uh, Krusik's going to catch him finally. Bly Blyer tries to get a piece of him. Pretty hard to handle a man like that for more than a second or two. Now it's third down. 21 to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Franco Harris, and he's ganged up and taken at the 18-yard line of Houston. Again by Robert Brazil and Alvin Bethay, the right end. So the field goal team is on the field once more for the Steelers. They're already ahead 10-0. They have had Houston pinned back deep in their own territory throughout the first quarter. That's Franco's uh, note that uh, he'll become fourth player to gain 5,000 yards in his first five years in the NFL. Walden holding, Gorilla's kick is up, and this one is sputtering and slices off to the left. That's no good. You know, Kurt, it's a funny thing, but Pittsburgh has now made 10 points and they've had the opportunity to make 21. How many times in the last three weeks have we seen a team start fast, not capitalize, and end up in a heck of a ball game? Next Sunday, Pittsburgh travels to Cincinnati. And uh, they need some help. Somebody else has to beat Cincinnati. And then if Cincinnati lost to Pittsburgh, 
And the Steelers didn't lose anymore. They'd win their division again. But they beat Cincinnati here. That's going to be the second game of our doubleheader. And we'll give you more about the first game here in a minute. Houston again in their own territory. They just can't get it out of there. Can't get any breathing room for themselves. They're running from their own 20. And there's the gun. That's the end of the first period. The score, the Pittsburgh Steelers 10 and the Houston Oilers nothing. Preceding an ask with furnished to the public service by the National Football League. 28 games in a row now, regular season games that the Steelers have not been scored on in the first period. It is second down and eight. The pitch is to Ronnie Coleman. Coleman almost for the first down and not quite. Short of his 30-yard line, brought down by Jack Lambert. In the first period, total offense, Pittsburgh 68 yards, Houston 10. And get these field positions for Houston. In four possessions, they have started from their 21, their 17, their 13, and their 20. <laughs> that, is, that is not optimum. Earl Thomas come in, double tight end, Sawyer and Alston. Third down, a half yard to go. Flags are down. They have a false start by Houston. Ronnie Coleman trying to get the first down. He was racked up anyway by Greenwood and Joe Green. That's right. They got a head start and still couldn't make it. You'll see this penalty decline. Ball start. Motion declined by the Steelers. Their defensive unit comes off again. And uh, Houston will have to punt once more. He actually lost a yard in the last play. Once again, Theo Bell drops back. He's been excellent in punt return so far. Making uh, 10, 12 yards more than he should have made. Skip Butler will do the kicking. Ten men are going in there. Look out. They block it. They went after him. They sent 10 men in, and the ball is fumbled out of bounds. Lauren Taves, I believe, got to the punter. Now let's see where they've got it out of bounds. It's funny. They could rule this several different ways. That's right. Kurt, if they ruled that it was picked up by a stealer, controlled, and then fumbled when he was out of the end zone, it would be a touchback. Yes, sir. Let's go down to referee Ben Dreyer. The safety. The safety. Well, let's take a look, Kurt. Uh, Skip Butler is a place kicker. He's not a punter. He's taking an extra step. He gets the ball a little sloppily. They've got the whole group in on him. There's no way that ball could find a hole and slip past the line of scrimmage. And that was Lauren Taves that blocked it. Taves did block. And now they've got the whole group of black shirts going after the ball. Donnie Shell, I think, is the man who picks it up but never gets control of it. It, it goes into the end zone. It's still a continuation of the block punt, and they get two points. Out of bounds. They're talking to Bum Phillips. Fumbled out of bounds. Houston, and nobody had possession after his block, and went out of bounds in the Houston end zone. So it's ruled a safety. We'll have a free kick now from the Oilers from their 20 yard line. The possession goes to the team that had it last, which was Houston, and was fumbled out of bounds. So that makes the score now 12 to nothing, Pittsburgh, with 14.06 to play in the first half. Well, the Steelers have scored a touchdown, a field goal, and a safety. Shell is credited with the safety in the end zone by uh, getting to the Houston man and forcing him out of bounds with the ball. Skip Butler will punt, and nothing can go right for the Oilers against the defending Super Bowl champs who are playing an even better defense the last five games than they played the last two years. Bud Carson, their defensive coordinator, said it is almost scary how well our defense is playing. You're right, and, you know, we mentioned that nothing's going right for Houston, but they have saved 16 points. It could be 28 to zip. Oh, my. Look at that. That's the shortest. A fumble by uh, the Steelers and a pile up there. I... Looked like Jim Clack might have fumbled the ball. I think Theo Bell fell on it. Nope. Oh, no, Houston has Houston the ball. Has. And down on that ball is number 58, 
for the Houston Oilers, and that's Tim Rosovich. All right, here we go. That we is Clack. We see Clack trying to make the catch. He makes it look like a jump center. Nobody gets a hold of it. Nobody's really got it to this point. You see Bell come in there, and it looked like he was going to grab it. One of the Houston <laughs> men just snatched it away. <laughs> well, the Oilers finally got some field position on the shortest free kick I've ever seen. How would you like to be a football? Now Blunt's coming into the lineup now. They had only 10 men on the field. And I think they've had to call a timeout. They had only 10 men on the field. The way they're playing defense, they might could play with eight or nine if they'd let them. <laughs> timeout with a score. Pittsburgh 12 and Houston nothing. The young Steve Grogan went to work. He hit Johnson with a 15-yarder to make it 10 to 7. But now he just passed 17 yards to Daryl Stingley, and New England has the lead 14 to 10. Here is a first down for the Oilers in their 45. And they fumble the ball. Fred Willis trying to dive on it. Loses it over. And right back with it is the Steelers, Jack Lambert. Lambert has been a phenom this year. Way out in front and leading the Steelers in tackles. He intercepts passes. He recovers fumbles. Well, I think he just happened to be the man playing middle linebacker that fell on a fumble that was very loosely handled by a running back. Now, when you pitch the ball out to Willis, he's not going to drop one out of a thousand of those. However, they seem to have him rattled. They've lost most of whatever poise they had in the beginning of the ball game. Lambert's there to pick it up. And rightly, he gets up and sees what he can do with it. Steelers ahead 12-0 with the ball now on the Oiler 38-yard line. Franco Harris is dumped at the 40-yard line of Houston. Charging in was uh, 54, Greg Bingham and Ted Washington, the two linebackers. They play a 3-4, three, three down lineman, four linebackers. Cody Smith's out. And I asked the Oilers if they had another lineman hurt, what they would do. They said they play a 2-5 or a 1-6. What's that mean? <laughs> they're, they're out of down linemen. Second down, 12. Lewis and Pugh, the wide receiver. Kruzek off to Franco Harris. Outside, he turns it. And he nearly has the first down. Flag down. On the run, Bingham made the hit on Franco Harris. Regardless of the fact it's a penalty, Kurt, if you take a look at the right side of, of the Steelers' line, they just open it up to where Franco could go any one of two or three spots and give him a chance like that. He's going to make some. That's a holding. That's the preliminary sign against the Steelers. <laughs> Maybe that's why. And we have an injured player. So let's take a look at some other scores. Mark Van Egan had just bucked over for a yard, and Oakland now has grabbed the lead against the Eagles 12 to 7. Scott Laidlow ran 16 yards. The point was good. Cowboys lead Atlanta 7-0. The Cowboys have lost just once this year. Charlie Joyner has taken his second touchdown pass of Dan Faust. This was a 30-yarder. The Chargers leading Buffalo 21 to 3. Terribly disappointing year for the Bills. And a surprisingly good That's year for San Diego. C.L. Whittington is injured, and they lost their number one draft pick, Joe Washington, with a bad knee in preseason. It's now back on the 50-yard line. It is second down and 22 yards to go for the Steelers, who are ahead in this game, 12 to nothing. Willie Alexander replaces C.L. Whittington in the secondary. Music. Good pass. Is it a completion or a fumble? It's ruled an incomplete pass. He did not have control or possession of the ball to do the acts common to the game. Well, Larry Brown got a, took a pretty good lick. The ball actually slipped a little bit by Kruzik when he threw it. He threw it a little higher, and it's kind of soft. When he goes up for it, it's not quite as easy to grab and hang on to. He got a good lick, and it was by Willie Alexander and... Uh, that's the way it ends. John, you, you say a soft pass. You, you think the youngster throws the ball hard enough, or is he Darn floating right. it too much? Oh, I think, he, I think he throws it plenty hard enough. I think he can throw it long enough, too. Third down and 22. Out they go. The backs are out. Everybody's out. Now he's in trouble. Getting away. He's trying to find somebody. He's got the tight end. Larry Brown. Brown stopped. At the 42-yard line of Houston by Brazil and Tyner, they nearly had him trapped. The quarterback, Kruzik, back at his own 35. Kurt, a second ago, you asked me if I think he throws it hard enough. 
I definitely do. I think he's one of the outstanding young quarterbacks to come down the pike. Now look at his protection here. He's getting good protection. He hangs in there. He's waiting for a receiver to open up. He doesn't do anything. He waits. He knows he's in trouble now. Buffet loses control of him. He comes out. Now rather than work around trying to make a big play, slips it off to Larry Brown, picks up what he can. Uh, I think he's going to be a super one. Billy Johnson and Ron Coleman are deep for Bobby Wallace punt. Wall has become a master of kicking out of bounds and hanging them up. He has the best net return punting uh, average. That is, take his punts minus the returns. The re opponents have gained only five yards of punt return against Pittsburgh this year. That means a good punter and excellent coverage on the punt by the specialty team. Walls, America's best-selling tire at 30% off regular price. Sale ends Tuesday. Yes, good year, but six foot down on prices. Olympic gold medalist Dorothy Hamill invites you to her first special with guest stars Jim McKay and Gene Kelly. It's a night to remember. Then, join John Denver and his guests, Dennis Weaver, Joanne Woodward, and Jaws. Make it a date with John Denver. And be there with Olivia Newton-John and guests Elliot Gould, Lee Majors, and Wonder Woman Linda Carter. It's a special Olivia Newton-John and a very special... 104 Pittsburgh. ...day in this blizzard in Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, with this touchdown burst by Franco Harris, beat the Bengals 7-3. to three. Yesterday, they swarmed over Tampa Bay 42 to nothing. Their playoff hopes still alive, but they must wait and watch that man.